Uh, thank you for uh, organizer Professor Yong Jung Kim and main speakers. Uh, this is my first time for my attending the winter school. Uh, it was really useful and informative to me. <laughs> I'm not a student, but I realized that uh, it was really useful. And so I would like to express my gratitude to all organi organizers and the main speakers and other um, speakers too. Um, uh, today I'm going to discuss the some existence of the solution, actually a weak solution, but uh, in a way more precisely bounded weak solutions of, the, of some models, which is called keller ziegel fluid model. Um, fluid is Navier-Stokes equation. And uh, actually the, the biological cell um, is described sort of the keller ziegel types equation, which has a nonlinear diffusion, more precisely porous medium types. Uh, by the way, this is a joint work with uh, Dr. Zhang, Yun Sang Zhang, and one of my students, Jae Kim. Okay. Um, so uh, the plan of my talk is as follows. First of all, let me uh, do some introductions of these specific models and maybe motivations. Um, and then maybe state my main result uh, with the comparison with the previous known result. And then maybe I just, I don't, I, I don't want to give the, all the details of my proof, but I just give, instead I just want to give some main idea or how the, how the proof goes, I mean the mainstream of the proof. Um, so, um, the model under our consideration is Yes, um, couple system. <laughs> so um, we have uh, three unknowns. Oops, here, here. Okay. Th this model was proposed by the Duvars and his collaborator. Um, but this is, uh, I mean, from the point of the PD, it, it is nothing but coupled with the keller ziegel and Navier Stokes equation. Um, the motivation of this study is based on the, some observation in the uh, biological experiment. So um, here in the end is the uh, certain types of bacteria which uh, lives in fluid. Um, so the name of, of this is Bacillus subtilis. Maybe <laughs> Professor Nimura uh, you know, already introduced this model. But um, as far as member uh, in, in this talk, he is uh, sort of considered a situation where the bacteria consumes the nutrients and also produce chemicals. So I, I, in a way it is more like a chelic, classical chelicidal types coupled with the nutrient. But in our case, uh, it's slightly different. Um, the bacteria also satisfy the um, kind of aggregation depending on the oxygen. But in this case, um, the oxygen is consumed by the bacteria. So uh, one of the uh, point you have to keep in mind is the science of this right hand side. The classical Keller-Siegel model has the positive sign because the chemicals produced by the uh, bacteria, I mean more precisely amoeba I think. Um, but in our case the, um, it, the oxygen denoted by the, in this case the C is consumed by the uh, bacteria so uh, it is actually decreased. Okay, so minus size. So uh, there are some parameters. Uh, I mean, the m most important parameters are chemotactic sensitivity and consumption rate of the oxygens. Uh, maybe we have to avoid calling this sensitivity. I mean, chemotactic sensitivity because the chemical is not involved here instead of only the oxygen concentration involved. But I think the keller zig <laughs> Only, uh, usually people just, this, this parameter is really important, but the usual people call it, I mean, refer it to chemotactic sensitivity. That's why I, with, yeah, I follow the usual um, notation, I mean, the names of this. Um, so all the parameters are positive. And the situation is, maybe, let me show the, um, some, uh, yeah, sorry. I mean, just to copy this, um, the, the, the pictures from the article. So, um, 
um, I hope you guys see the, uh, I mean, I hope you to see some, because the resolution is maybe not so good, because I just maybe scan this, just. Anyway, um, this is experiment. So uh, uh, when you drop, uh, drop the water onto the plate, um, this, this water has, I mean, contains the bacteria. And also, this drop also contains oxygen too. So uh, initially, uh, the distribution of bacteria is uniform everywhere. So you can see any patterns here. Uh, but the thing is, the, uh, the top of the surface, actually oxygen at the top of the uh, uh, water, the oxygen is more concentrated than the bottom. So uh, there is a difference, the density, I mean concentrations of oxygen. Um, at the beginning, they don't, see, I mean, anything is not activated, but as time go by, uh, because the, um, the bacteria is you know, sensitive to the uh, oxygen, actually more, more precisely oxygen gradient. So uh, as times go by, they are moving toward the top of the uh, surface of the water. So um, uh, at some point, the, uh, you can see the high density of the bacteria at the top. And then, I mean, compared to the density of the fluid, the density of the bacteria is much heavier. So uh, later, I mean, of course, it's in the fluid, which means it's also affected by the fluid. It could be drifted and so on and so on. And then, and also the uh, kind of a gravitating force, I mean, the heavy, uh, heavy effect of the uh, bacteria is influenced the, uh, also fluid. So that's why all unknowns are coupled each other. So they are going down. Um, and then this kind of uh, phenomenon is repeated again and again. Uh, let me show you another uh, experiment which is more interesting. Um, this is also an uh, experiment, not a numeric simulation. So uh, I, I think the most of you are heard about the uh, Leila Taylor type instability. Uh, typically, it happens uh, between two different fluids uh, whose density are different. For instance, heavier, uh, heavier fluid is uh, up, uh, above the, the lighter fluid, and then later, as times go by, you can see that Leila Taylor type instability. But here, the situations are different. Uh, the, the, the thing is, the, uh, it's, it's the same situation. Uh, the, the, the distributions of the bacteria is uniform, but as times go by, the, um, the bacteria is, uh, goes up following the oxygen gradient. And then uh, now the, the top of the surface of the water is heavier. So now the, uh, because of the difference of the density, and then it's going down. And so you can you see that some um, finger types of instability, right? And at, at the bottom, the, uh, at, at the bottom, uh, uh, there is no, I mean, compared to the top of the surface, uh, the, 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 the concentration of oxygen is quite rare. So, and then later, what, could, what you can see is the, the mushroom types uh, plums at the bottoms of the fluid. And then, uh, again, this process, uh, now, again, uh, after some time, this, uh, what, what, I, what I heard is that th this thing is repeated again and again. Now the, the bacteria are searching for, looking for a, a high concentration, I mean the uh, oxygen gradient, and it goes up, and then repeating this process again and again. Um, this process, I mean, th this is experiment, and also some people do some uh, numeric simulation too. Um, compared to this kind of observations and numeric simulation, um, there are uh, relatively, uh, uh, I mean, relatively small knowledge about the mathematical observation, mathematical analysis. So that's the motivations of our study. Okay. I think it could be cool such a I mean the integrity is bioconvection. Uh, bioconvection? Bioconvection, yes. Uh, it looks like they are very, very instable. Uh, they are instable, I mean, so the same types of equations or? No, 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 same behavior. Ah, same behavior. Yeah, I mean, this is really interesting, and then if, uh, if we can prove, you know, more rigorous way, that would be nice. But at this moment, um, even the distance matters. So, I mean, as you already mentioned, the, I mean, in your model, even in your model, the existence or some asymptotic behavior is quite uh, difficult, right? I mean, you can have some numeric simulation, but I think the rigorous way to show 
uh, I mean, the, the way to show the rigorous manner is uh, it's a different story, I think. Uh, so uh, uh, th this is the starting point of our uh, motivations. And, okay. So, um, uh, just in case, uh, let me show some. I think the already professor um, Mimura and other papers um, discuss a lot of the biological background, so I, I don't want to uh, repeat this, uh, the details, de details again. But um, just in case, uh, let me remind you what the uh, classical Kellogg theory is. So, the, oops, so the, the uh, classical model was uh, suggested by the Petrog and Kellogg figures um, in, the, in the following manners. So the a, a, N is the indicate the cell density of the bacteria, and then C is the chemical produced by the bacteria. Uh, so maybe uh, amoeba, I guess. So, um, so the, uh, the, this is a typical diffusion, and the concentration of the oxygen produced by the N. This is uh, just the degradation, degradations, and the the the, the, the aggregation phenomenon occurs by these uh, nonlinear terms. So um, basically, this is uh, we could say reaction diffusion terms. Anyway, um, the the mathematically uh, known result is even in two D case. Um, uh, let me let me let me be more precise. Uh, all the parameters could be uh, depending on some functions, but uh, here. Uh, the simplest case, I think the, you can say this is just constant. So chi is just constant and the other parameters are just constant. Then the, uh, the, the known thing is the even in 2D case, if the initial mass is uh, beyond some threshold, I mean critical mass, actually I think the 8 pi or something, divided by chi, and then it has a finite terms closer. Otherwise, it has a global existence. And, but in one d case, I think um, already Professor Mimura has mentioned, but one d case, no, uh, no blows of infinite time, maybe infinite times blows up, but it's depending on the, the models, I think. Sometimes it converges to some steady state, maybe some constant. But anyway, um, the typical model has, uh, uh, has aggregation phenomena. But even in, in 1D case, uh, solutions uh, stay forever in time. But in 2D case, uh, you typically, I mean, in, in general, for large data, it blows up in finite time. And, um, okay. So, uh, but in our case, uh, slightly different because of the difference is the, uh, uh, this, uh, this cell, biological cell, uh, in this case produce the chemicals. That's why the size of the N is positive. Maybe there are some parameters uh, that could be added here. Uh, but in our case, for instance, um, disregarding the fluid terms, uh, you can see that our models reduce the more or less same as the kellogg ziegel types, but the difference is the signs are different here. So because uh, the mechanism is different, because the oxygen is consumed by the bacteria, so it should be decreased. So that's why my sign. So you, you may say um, uh, because this is sort of the has an uh, aggregation. Of course, this, this guy produced the I mean the aggregation, but on the other hand, the, the chemicals equations of chemicals are much nicer than here. Um, so um, so. Uh, Actually, I, 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 I saw this uh, models first. I, 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 I think even in 2D case, maybe you can have a global distance. But uh, it turns out the, the rigorous proof of this thing is it's not easy at all. Maybe, um, um, maybe well, really depends on. Actually, uh, that's why interesting this somehow the um, characterizations of the parameters, in, in particular, uh, Keller Ziegler. Oh, sorry. Chemotactic sensitivity, chi's and uh, consumption rate of chi. So uh, the main purpose, one of the purpose of our study is a sort of the characterization of the uh, values of, I mean, actually more precisely, conditions of the chi's and kappa. I mean here, so that uh, some cases we have, uh, we could have a global existence, um, maybe not, but uh, uh, up to now uh, we don't see any blob phenomena yet. But some cases, uh, some ca for some cases, uh, we succeed in proving global existence of the boundary solution. Of course, not only this model, I mean, not for this model, actually, more complicated because our models uh, coupled with the fluid, I mean, Navier-Stokes equation. Um, anyway, oh, oh, just, just in case, uh, 
uh, I mean, this is the life cycle. So actually, this is uh, uh, this is about the uh, classical Keller-Seger models, which is uh, observed in the life cycle of Dictyostelium. Dictyostelium, right? Okay. So um, as far as I mean, my knowledge about the biology is quite limited. So, but uh, what I heard is uh, there are four stages of the life cycle of. Uh, uh, Dictyostelium. Dicky, so the, the, the first one is vegetation status and this is a case of the food is sufficient but after, after that I mean, when the food is not sufficient they have some aggregation phenomena here so second stage is aggregation and then they form uh, so-called slugs and migrate eventually they form the culmination which, he, 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 which he consists with two parts, spores and stalks and the spores and the list. Then this process again, uh, repeated again and again. Uh, typically in experiment, according to experiment, it takes not so long, it's 24 hours or something to see whole, I mean one cycle of the, the of the addictive stem. Anyway, um, so the Keller's Eagle, I mean classical Keller's Eagle model, sort of people believe as far as I know, people believe the, um, the, uh, it shows some mechanism of the aggregation up to some point. I mean, this status is quite complicated, but uh, 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 from the vegetation status to <coughs> aggregation status, then certainly there's some aggregation depending on the chemical production. So uh, then, uh, then this phenomenon is uh, sort of the mathematical formulate in this models, Keller-Seger models. But uh, I think that there are a lot of uh, discussions about what is the chemotactic sensitivity because uh, um, it may not be a constant depending on the solution, I mean C and N, but how? That is a more interesting question, I think. Okay. Okay. So, uh, uh, so some people study the, these types of angiogenesis, uh, which means the second equation, I mean chemical equation is just all the types. Um, I mean, this initiated by the uh, French people's um, Korea Super Thumbs Up. And also there are a lot of results about uh, this. But up to now, the, I think the all, of, all result is not complete. Um, when it comes to existence of the regular solution. Uh, as far as I know, uh, if the initial data is sufficiently small, then you can say the existence of the weak solution. Um, but um, for large data, it's still for these models, it's, it's not, nothing known about the uh, regularity methods or existence matter. Okay, um, the, the, today I'm, uh, the, the, thing, uh, the equations I'm going to address is the, uh, as I told you before, the Keller-Siegel Navier-Stokes equation. Um, so the, uh, the the first work is done by the Ross. Um, so the what what he showed is the local distance of weak solution. Weak solution means I, I, I should be more precise what it, what, what the notions of the weak solution. But uh, yeah, simply speaking, it satisfies the equation in the distribution sense. Anyway, uh, he established the. Um, in a way, it's a strong solution, I mean, regular solution, but for only local in time, not, not in global time. Right? And later, Duan, Roth, and Markovich also proved that uh, global existence weak solutions uh, for small data. And also, they show that, um, I think, the, in a way, stability, I mean, because they uh, prove the existence of the global solution near a uh, constant state. So initially data is constant and then if you perturb a little bit and the data is sufficiently small then um, solutions globally exist. So it's a kind of a small perturbation uh, problem I guess. Um, but, um, but there are some conditions uh, regarding kappa and chi and kappa. So I think the, um, maybe I'll explain more uh, the, the, the motivation why these conditions are, are given. But um, I think the, uh, the first three terms in, in, a way is, in, in a way is reasonable, but uh, the last one is in some sense is not reasonable because the, it, it, the, the ratio of the consumption rate and 
uh, sensitivity is concave in some sense with respect to the C variables. But uh, I think I understand in the proof. I mean, maybe I'll give the somehow why they. I mean, why why they need this kind of uh, conditions in the in their proof. But uh, um, in the biological sense, I, I don't know why these conditions are given. So um, one of the motivations um, our study is. Uh, instead of these conditions, we could find, I mean, without, for instance, without this condition, can we prove the existence of the regular solution or something like this? And, all right, okay. For instance, uh, one of the typical cases is this. I think um, kappa is uh, just a C, and then uh, chi is just constant, but it doesn't satisfy this. Because uh, in their proof, they actually, uh, this quantity should be strictly negative. You'll see how the proof goes in the proof. Anyway, um, so um, okay. so uh, according to actually the uh, Tubal and his collaborator introduced the model in mathematical way, but uh, in their paper uh, uh, they, they take the kappa and chi in, the, in this way because uh, according to experiment there is uh, some threshold uh, the value, critical values of C star such that um, this kappa and chi is uh, activated above this threshold. So uh, in their analysis, I mean, I think the mostly based on the, I mean, what they did is just usually uh, mostly numeric simulation. But uh, the thing is that they take the uh, indicator function, I mean, characteristic function with a different uh, weight. So basically above C star, it is just uh, values K1 and above C star, the chi has a K2, right? So um, in a way, uh, what they use, I think, uh, in, in our <laughs> in our observation is this is nothing but the ratio is just constant. So mu is the k1 over k2, right? Um, so um, this is experiment. I mean, uh, actually, uh, from the, this kind of uh, observation, they take this uh, spe special types of kappa and chi, right? Um, so um, this is uh, done by the professor Mengju Chen and Ji Yun Lee. Uh, is there over there, and uh, what, what he did in the in the two-dimensional case, two D case. So uh, uh, one of the, our assumption is the kappa and chi. The ratio of this is manageable. So in other words, not. I mean, this is the precise, but it doesn't need to be precise. But as long as this guy is uh, small, then we can show the global existence. Actually. Uh, we prove that uh, solutions are regular and the no blows up occurs uh, in 2D case. But uh, 3D case is much more complicated. Of course, Navier Stokes is already complicated, right? So um, when it comes to 3D case, uh, instead of Navier Stokes, we are looking at the uh, Stokes system, which is uh, even in 3D is uh, regular because it's a linear system. Uh, on the other hand, uh, I mean, this is also joined to what we, we prove that sort of the regularity criteria. In other words, uh, suppose T star is the, the maximal times of existence so, so that the uh, solutions flow at T star, then this quantity should be infinite. Uh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> that's my, okay, sorry. Uh, also, we prove the uh, existence of the uh, weak solution in 3D case, but uh, in 3D case, uh, uh, the way to construct weak solution is a little bit uh, more tricky. So uh, the assumption actually more restrictive. So uh, for 2D case, uh, we slightly, I mean, it doesn't need to be the same, but uh, in 3D case, uh, this, uh, this uh, difference is exactly the same. Under the conditions, we prove the global existence. Actually, even for the Navier-Stokes equation, I think, is it, is it right? I, 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 I guess so, even for Navier Stokes. Actually, uh, we are not looking for, I mean, when it comes to the notions of weak solution, uh, it doesn't require the boundedness of solution. I mean, the energy inequality and some surplus space, then I think um, under this assumption, for even for Navier Stokes equation case, it works. So, you and 
That's a good question, but I think the, uh, maybe I should say in, in a different way. Suppose uh, T star uh, is max, uh, the time of the existence of the solution, and then suppose this, uh, uh, this quantity is finite, then the solutions could be extended over the time T star. So it's a kind of a regularity criteria. Also, say. I think both of them are required. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, but the, 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 the focus of my talk today is, foc uh, is more related to the porous medium types equation. Um, this also, I think the, the previous case, everything is just a li linear equation up to the leading terms, but here the uh, equations of n is now not the uh, linear one, it's uh, non-linear. So it's porous medium, so called, typically people say porous medium types equation. So uh, the non-linear also has uh, at the reading terms for the Laplace terms. So where the m is bigger than one, I guess, in our analysis. So uh, Liu Lotz also studied these types of equations. Uh, because I don't know what is the motivation, but one big difference is I think maybe it's also related to your works, but uh, you have uh, some propagations of the uh, of the the bacteria. But uh, in, in, in I think the, if you have uh, just a linear linear terms, then uh, the uh, sorry. Um, the big difference I think is the finite propagations. If you have, a, um, okay, it depends on initial data, but initial data is, has a complex support, then uh, the porous medium case has a finite propagation, so you can see that the, the um, complex support, I mean, the propagations of the leading edge of the, maybe, but I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> My talk is only focused on the uh, mathematical analysis. Eh? So one of the, uh, uh, maybe the, 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 uh, uh, one of the interpretation is, uh, um, maybe if you want to see the some finite speed propagation, maybe it's, uh, it's better to look at the uh, cross medium type equation. Maybe that's the motivation of this study. Um, so, um, anyway, um, the w w what they proved is the as long as m between 2 over 3 and 2, then they show the global existence of a strong solution. Strong solution means a bounded weak solution because the porous medium equation is certainly cannot have the classical solution. Is uh, the best thing to expect is a CR power regularity, I think. Mm -hmm. And right, um, in three dimensional case, is much weaker, I think. And here the here weak solution is a little bit different. Here I think the strong solution means a bounded solution, but it's not a just weak solution which may not be bounded. Anyway, let me be more precise later. Mm -hmm. uh, and also the the Michael Winkler and, and Yoshan um, the Chinese mathematician proved that. Uh, for special case of this, so uh, here chi is just constant and kappa is c, just c. In for this uh, special situation, they improve the uh, exponent of the this uh, porous medium exponent. So in this case, as long as m is bigger than seven over eight, and then they prove the global existence. In the 3D case, I think of course for the Stokes. Uh, type. It means that if m is greater than 1, it's a very, I mean, uh, high distributivity. That's why that, I mean, the uh, distributivity prevents the blow up. Yeah, I think definitely when it comes to the global existence, this uh, high power, bigger than 1, uh, give help, I think. <laughs> as long as you are interested in the boundedness of the solution. Um, so, okay, let me remind you the, our uh, equations uh, again. So, uh, instead of m, uh, for just convenience, I, I, because it's always bigger than 1, so I split it m into 1 plus alpha, where alpha is positive. Um, again, uh, my propose, I mean, our propose is to sort of the character, uh, characterizations of the uh, chemotaxis sensitivity and the consumption rate, so that uh, under what conditions uh, we can say uh, about uh, global existence and, and so on and so on. Of course, 
is coupled with the uh, uh, the exponent, the, the size of the exponent. I think. Um, okay. So uh, this is kind of a classification. It uh, sounds a little bit complicated, but uh, um, okay. This first condition is a necessary condition uh, because the consumption rate should be positive or negative, and also the, uh, uh, the if there is no uh, oxygen, then must be zero. Okay, that's the natural one, and then and we also we just. Uh, you know, list of the possible situations. So the B1 is the chi is, the, I mean, increasing, of course, I think is a natural assumption, I think. Um, but B2 and B3 is more than that. Uh, actually, this is the uh, increasing, but uh, there is a row bound. So basically, the slope of the kappa and chi uh, strictly positive. For instance, you can say, uh, chi C is just C or something linear or then linear growth then definitely this is true okay and so the assumption one um, uh, our result is twofold I mean two dimensions and three dimensions but uh, in, in, in these talks I only focus on, on the three dimensional case so um, uh, this is kind of a cl uh, classification of our all possible uh, parameters which guarantee the global existence of a solution. But uh, here, okay, for instance, uh, when alpha is bigger than a third and also chi satisfy this condition increasing, then uh, we guarantee the existence. And, but if you uh, require more than this, I mean strictly po uh, positive slope of the kappa, then we can lower the exponent of the alpha, so uh, that gonna be uh, definitely less than a third is going to be uh, up to uh, 1 over 6 and uh, something similar okay that's the story of the weak solution um, but there is uh, another uh, characterization um, I mean just for convenience I split the two cases one case is the existence of weak solution uh, simply speaking it satisfies the of course is uh, is in some smaller spaces but uh, weak solution means it satisfies the some energy estimate uh, but uh, the, the, the bound weak solution is more than that uh, not only satisfying the uh, entropy types energy nuclei but also the solutions are um, much nicer spaces I mean bounded and uh, for, for N and the other C and U is much better than, I mean, more than boundedness. Anyway, um, then uh, we slightly, uh, we, we should have more, more restrictions on the alpha and the condition, but condition is more or less the same, but the power of the alpha, I mean the exponent is bigger than a third or, or one over six. So uh, here, uh, as long as uh, Okay, for instance, uh, in, in my talk, I, I'll give the one case. So I, I'll just focus on the second cases. So, um, so alpha is bigger than a quarter, bigger than or equal to, and then chi satisfies B2, which means the uh, positive slope of the derivative. Then um, we have a bounded solution. I mean, we can show the construction of the bounded weak solution. So uh, here is the notions of the weak solution. Weak solution means, as I told you before, solution is in some function spaces. And, sorry. Um, oops, what happened? Yes, okay, here, yeah. Uh, I mean, satisfy the equation in the sense of distributions. And also, um, bounding solutions, we have this. Uh, it satisfies the it definitely weak solution, but more than this, we require the high regularity of this. So, for instance, n is bounded because um, p is going to be uh, include infinite 2. Okay? And so, the one result for the um, regarding the weak existence of weak solution, um, under this initial data, um, simply speaking, uh, we have uh, uh, existence of weak solution, right? Um, under the assumption one means th there is a classification, right? To remember, we have four cases. For instance, one of the cases is uh, uh, alpha is uh, bigger than one over six, and then chi has a positive slope, right? That's one of the case. Then we have uh, um, global existence, and. 
Uh, one comment I wish to make is uh, if the initial mass is sufficiently small, then the limiting case also included in, in each case. So we have uh, uh, for classification, and then, but the limiting case is not included for large data. But uh, if, the, if you have more uh, additional assumption, which is smallest of the initial data, then the limiting case could be also included uh, in our analysis. And um, when it comes to bounded weak solutions, then it's more or less the same, but uh, we <laughs> need another classification, do you remember? Uh, the now the, the requirement of the exponent is much larger than, I mean, higher than 1 over 6, actually. Uh, one case is uh, alpha is bigger than a curl. I mean, I mean uh, 1 over 4, right? Equal to. So, uh, of course, the initial data are much regular. Otherwise, then we have, a, we have no hope. But anyway, this is, you, you could say the initial data is, is just smooth, the question is, do we have uh, existence of the bound solutions or not? But this is the case, as long as alpha is, has some powers and right uh, under some conditions of the kappa and chi. All right. Um, by the way, two dimensional case also we can think of these similar types of problem. But uh, I think the, the the difference is based on the embedding theories and so on. So. so um, in two, di two dimensional case, uh, more or less the point is for any alpha which is bigger than zero, then we can have a global existence of the bounded weak solutions uh, with much weaker conditions than kappa and chi, right? But I'm not going to address the, this uh, problem. I mean, maybe I give the uh, one of the key points between difference in 2D and 3D, but uh, I'm not going to give the details in two dimensional case here. Okay, this is the tables, but <laughs> yeah, okay, this is classifications, the conditions of kappa and chi, so then also together with the conditions of alpha. This is the case of the weak solution in 3D case. And this is the case of the, oh, oops, <laughs> this is typo, uh, bounded weak solution in 3D case, right? So, yeah. so in 2D and 2, your 3D, 3D and your 3D. Oh, no, 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 yeah, I, I have to say something about this, but stock system. Now, in 3D, of course, uh, we are uh, here, I think, yeah. Yeah, no okay, okay, yeah. uh, what I mean is, this is a tau is 1 in 2D case, but the 3D case, the tau is 0. What is the tau? Tau is the parameters in front of the nonlinear term, so... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this means uh, the 3D case uh, we just uh, studied the stock system instead of Navier. Yeah, sorry about that. That's a good point. Yeah. In, in the means that the finite flow. Oh, sorry. In the table. Yeah. In the table. Yeah. You said in valley there. Oh, we do not know. Simply speaking, uh, we we do not know the uh, because it's the kind of conditions. I mean, under these conditions, we have this uh, uh, existence, but. Here means, okay, it's a kind of confusing, but we don't have any assumptions of uh, kappa and chi. Then what can you say about this? So nothing, I mean, no. So this is uh, maybe the um, future. Oh, you mean not valid or? So we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Anyway, um, so let me compare the uh, ideas, of, I mean, uh, compared to the, the known equations, I mean, Keller's Seville equation, also the way, uh, different way to prove the um, existence of weak solution done by Lotz and other people, I mean, uh, his collaborator. So um, this is the Keller Seville equation. Of course, the porous medium types, but again, this is a classical types of this. I think, uh, actually, Professor Sugiyama visited me w around one month ago, and then we discussed the, uh, of course, uh, this problem, I mean, the keller ziegel navier stokes equation, and so on. Okay, anyway, uh, she is somehow expert in these uh, types of problems. Um, so, uh, the idea is, of course, for these models, uh, there are some classifications of the exponent of the M for global existence and blows of infinite time. Anyway, the idea is um, you can take the uh, LP types of estimate. Uh, of course, the restriction is M is bigger than this. 
So we need somehow the high exponent of this. Under this assumption, then the right hand side have this. I mean, just nothing but integration by part, I guess. And then you integrate in time, then you can hold us and. So um, here the, the Laplace of C, uh, because it is just the uh, um, usual parabolic type equations and then the, the, the well-known estimate of the so-called, I don't know, maximal regularity estimate or something, then that implies the right-hand side is uh, just nothing but uh, the power is Q plus one. So we, we cannot close the estimate, but uh, the, the point is the, uh, we have a conservation of mass. I mean, um, because of the, yeah, I mean, the, the biological is correct, and also, as long as you give the Neumann boundary conditions, no flux condition is guaranteed. So, uh, uh, the total mass is always preserved a uh, priori. So, you, you just say uh, interpolating, and then the point, because it's uh, just uh, uh, always uh, constant time, so the requirement, as long as uh, this quantity is less than two, then we are fine. I mean, can, uh, we can observe this guy to the left, so, we have the uh, we have the estimate. That's the idea. So uh, under the, some con computation, then it turns out the, these conditions uh, somehow this like this. So um, if we compare to our result, then in 3D case, the m is bigger than I think the four over three, which means in terms of alpha, alpha is bigger than a third. Right? But our uh, case is uh, lower than this because if you remember the uh, bounded weak solution for our case, uh, the, the power is a quarter, which is slightly less than that. Uh, the reason is the rough estimate, we have, the, uh, we have the more or less same estimate. Of course, the uh, influence of the fluid is much more, the, make the problem much more complicated, but in principle, if you follow this approach, then I think the, uh, the, the estimation is the more or less the same. We have the same result. But uh, we do not want that kind of things. One big difference, as I told you before, the, the classical case is, is the production of the chemical. But in our case, we have minus sign. We have to use this, uh, these things. Of course, uh, maybe more than this because uh, uh, the not, uh, not the constant. Actually, there are some uh, um, the parameters are involved: chemical sensitivity or consumption rate. Um, so that it really helps uh, useful to our case. Okay, uh, on the other hand, the, uh, the, 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 the Lutz and his collaborator, uh, um, and the, the, their ideas are quite interesting and, and good, but one of the, <laughs> I think, the drawback is uh, this, uh, this guy should be positive, I mean, together with this. So that's why the negative signs are required. Um, it sounds complicated, but I think the idea is uh, quite simple as as far as I know. So idea is the, uh, okay, first of all, you can uh, estimate an entropy types estimate. You just uh, multiply, I mean, a priori estimate. Uh, you just multiply log n and the integration by part right inside this. So uh, the idea is, I think the, uh, because uh, you want to cancel this guy with this. So the idea is you divide by the chi c to the both sides and then you have minus n. And then I want to kappa here, so multiply kappa here, and then uh, multiply Laplace C, and then integration by parts. Uh, then, of course, this is not constant, but uh, the, 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 the main terms are these guys, uh, these guys are cancer. Of course, um, when you divide these and multiply some parameters, then it's complicated, but the, the point is this, this, this is nothing but the derivative of this guy. That's why they introduced this function, I see. Um, then, okay, I think it, 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 in a way it's a complicated computation, but the point is the cancellation, the, these guys and these guys. Anyway, um, then the difficulty arises in these uh, this terms, then all, all along the computations, some terms are positive, but some terms we do not know. So one of the drawbacks in the computation, I think the, this is quite a nice idea, but the thing is the, these guys, uh, we don't have any control. So, but as long as this is uh, strictly negative, strictly negative, then as a sign, the right hand side also by the, um, I mean, split in Young's inequality, you have this term, you can avoid. Then, but uh, this is small, so you can observe as long as it has a positive sign, right? That's why they assume these uh, conditions. Okay, so um, our, our, our case, uh, okay, so, 
Anyway, uh, okay. So what is the difference between 3, 3D and 2D? Eventually, um, when it comes to the sense weak solutions, uh, this is from the equations of the fluid. Then the, I mean, this is nothing but uh, due to the embeddings of the L2 of N. In 2D case, you can split in this way. That's why as long as alpha is bigger than zero, then we are done. But in 3D case, we need more than that. I mean, that's why we have uh, alpha is bigger than. I think uh, the original date is uh, slightly improved, but I think that the, this is the idea. So the, uh, the alpha should be bigger than a third. Then, then they uh, close the estimate. But again, the, 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 when it comes to exponent, it's the same as the uh, uh, people's, I mean, Japanese people's do for classical Taylor types of porous medium. Alpha is exactly the same powers, like uh, a third, a third is the same. Um, but uh, I mean, the thing I don't want to do this is I don't want uh, these conditions because uh, in a way it's, uh, it's to, I don't know why this kind of uh, conditions is, is reasonable. I mean, the proof is uh, definitely need, but I think the uh, exact cancellation may maybe not the case. So, um, the, I mean, of course, the, uh, the, the, uh, for the work, I mean, the, for the work with the young Professor Chen Jiuni, also we sort of use the cancellations, uh, right, uh, by using the the ratio of the kappa and chi is uh, more or less similar to some constant. Uh, I mean, in some sense, it's also cancellation, I think. But uh, this somehow, in this approach, they re really require the exact cancellation. But I think that uh, the, the thing they have to pay the price is this signs of that. So um, we don't want this. So, um, OK. OK. Maybe I just give the, uh, how much time do I have? So already passed? Ten minutes. Ten minutes? OK. Ten minutes. Thank you. Um, so the, the, the first step is to prove the existence of that. For convenience, let me introduce the, the sort of the energy, or maybe you can say the entropy uh, types of inequality. And to prove this, uh, the thing is we, uh, we want this. I mean, of course, to be more precise, I have to do everything is, uh, 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 this computation is a priori estimate, but a priori estimate is maybe not rigorous. So the more precise, the way to do is, first of all, we regularize the system and then we prove everything in, uh, I mean, estimate for the regularized system. Regularized system means the solution is regular. I mean, right? Uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, let, let me go to the point at the end of the talk. Anyway, um, then we pass into the limit and then everything is uh, there. The question is, uh, can we have the uniform estimate or not? Once we have the uniform estimate, independent of the how to regularize it, then, then we can pass into the limit and then, and then we have a, a existence of the a weak solution or bounded weak solution. That's, the, that's how the proof goes. Anyway, uh, the first step is we show we have a, a priori estimate because uh, the, I think the most important thing is the a priori estimate. How we get the a priori estimate this time, of this time? Okay. Uh, the, 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 but the point is quite simple, I think. Um, you see. Okay, where maybe. Um, okay, maybe here. I guess. All right. Um, yeah. I mean, this is nothing but the uh, LP type estimate. But the point is here. Um, this is a kind of technical point. I mean, we multiply big constant together with the log n to the equation. Of actually, to the equations of n. Then um, this is good. This is fine. But the right hand side we have this, right? But uh, the the thing is, the assumption we made at the beginning is the chi has the uh, strictly positive slope when you differentiate. So now here we uh, integration by parts again. Then you have the two terms. One term, this guy hit this here, and then this guy hit this. Here. And then uh, the first term, when you hit here, it is good term. Why? Because uh, the signs are negative, the derivative is uh, positive strictly positive. So the term, a uh, good term we have at uh, here is this. 
this says something new. I mean, um, yeah, uh, this is a good quantity, actually more or less like uh, n times gradient c square. Uh, I mean, in the previous case, I don't see any, anybody use these quantities, but uh, of course, <laughs> this quantity is uh, produced by the, our assumptions, right? With our assumptions, we cannot have. But once you have this quantity, I mean, good signs, good, si uh, good terms of this, then you can observe to the left, uh, right. And the technical point is that we multiply, be constant because uh, everything is coupled to each other. Uh, some terms appear, uh, this guy appears here, but uh, yeah, as long as you multiply, be constant, you can observe, even if you have a high um, number of, high, uh, big constant there. But anyway, th 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 that is the point. So uh, the, uh, the appearance of these good quantities uh, actually um, improve the power of the uh, uh, exponent of the M, I'm porous medium. So um, this is the just the uh, entropy types estimate. In such case, we need only require the one over six. But uh, if you want the more um, bounded solution of something, then I think the, this power should be more than this. Actually, it turns out this is going to be one, a, a one of a quarter. So I think, um, let me skip the, okay. So uh, on the other hand, uh, as, I, as I told you before, we have to couple everything. I mean, uh, the thing is we estimate all together and then in order to close the estimate and yeah. But uh, I think this is a typical thing, so I'm not going to the details. On the other hand, we, uh, we, want, uh, we use the Battisti equation too, instead of uh, um, Stokes, I mean velocity equation. Uh, that, uh, I mean, we realize that this is much useful instead of using the, uh, uh, the velocity equation. Um, okay. So uh, that's the first step, I mean, offer the estimate of the weak solution. And the next step is to establish the existence of the bounded weak solution. Uh, but I think the, uh, it's again, the idea is the same. The question is, uh, prior estimate shows that uh, this is LP types estimate. Uh, I told you already, I mean, I showed you the, how to estimate the uh, classical Keller signal types of porous medium, right? Uh, so. Uh, eventually we have more or less the same types of uh, uh, this and then we use the typical maximal regularity estimate. Uh, but again, the point is the, the a priori we have these types of estimate. question is can we have the finiteness of these things or not. So uh, this is nothing but a mixed norm of estimate of the equations of C. Uh, so now we the, the, the question remains, I mean, the, uh, whether or not we can show this finiteness or not, right? That's the main point. But again, uh, I think the computation is a, a little bit complicated, but uh, the key point, we have a good terms like uh, n times grad c square. These things are really useful in our, uh, our computation so that we can improve the, uh, the actually we, can roll the power of this, I mean, spatial integrability and then integrability of time could be less than the classical keller Seeger case, so that uh, we, uh, uh, our power is uh, slightly lower than typical keller Seeger types. Uh, so, I mean, in our case, uh, 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 one over four is fine. Okay? Mm, right. So, um, okay, if you don't mind, I just skip the details. Of, um, and in principle, is the, I mean, the other case is more or less the same idea. Uh, by the way, in 2D case, uh, 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 we have a different types of uh, interpolation, so-called radiance chaos inequality in 2D case. So that um, gives a different estimate. So then, actually, w w as long as alpha is bigger than zero, then we can a a close the estimate. That's the big difference. Uh, sorry about uh, skipping all the details for the 2D case, but I think the only dip, uh, difference is the embedding argument, right? I mean, wh what kind of estimate, but uh, 2D and 3Ds are quite a different, I mean, definitely different, right? Oh, by the way, um, I, I, I should mention the, the recently Tau and Winkler also obtained a similar result in 2D case for any alpha, but it's slightly different or something. Also, they consider the fluid equation is a stochistic, but our case is a navier stokes included too. 
Okay, uh, so maybe this is the last slide. So uh, as I told you before, I mean, uh, what, I what I have shown is just nothing but a prior estimate. But uh, more precisely, uh, to, construct, to construct weak solutions, we have to regularize. I think the, the, this kind of thing is already done many people. I mean, there are many ways to already, uh, uh, Professor Chen and uh, Professor Lee and I also use the different types of, uh, actually in such case, we use the iteration method. But one of the ways is uh, we uh, can use these types of regularized system. So solution is uh, regular. And then we can have the, I mean, you can repeat this uh, uh, the, the types of uh, uh, which I shown before, I mean, a priori estimate. So everything is. Uh, the question is, do we have the uh, estimate which is independent of epsilon? So actually, that's the case. Then, then we are done. I mean, we pass into the limit. I mean, the argument is, I think, uh, not not trivial. Maybe not for, uh, not trivial for the student, but I think in some sense it's standard. I think. Okay. So uh, I don't want. I mean, if you don't mind, I skip the details. Actually, uh, this is the last slide. And thank you, thank you for your attention.